Hello class, today I want to do a couple of lectures that are mixed together. The first one we're going to look at is a philosopher that we already met by the name of David Hume. Now David Hume, as we know from last time, described how we can't know the relationship between cause and effect. He says that there's no impression of a necessary connection between cause and effect. Well, one of the more interesting things that comes from that problem is not only we don't know that the external world exists because we can't be sure that what causes our impressions actually is the external world, he actually takes on Rene Descartes' basic idea that I think, therefore I am, and proves that if we think, we don't really know that we are at all. And here's how it works. To begin with, you might think that you have a feeling of yourself. Do you have a feeling of your me-ness? For example, do I have a feeling of pure Jim? And of course I do not. I can think of various memories I have, I can think of various ideas that I have, but I have no feeling of myself, my just plain self. So how do I come to this idea that I have a self, a self-identity, a self that actually is as itself? Well, really all I have is what Hume calls a bundle of impressions. A bundle of impressions. And this, and this bundle of impressions is basically the memories of experiences that we've had in, we, in our past, and we assemble those together, and we create this memory of something that we call our self. So in fact, we have no understanding of our self. We have no impression of our self. Our self is something that we construct out of a series of memories of impressions that have hit our senses. One of the reasons this is important, I mean, there's many reasons this is important, but one of the reasons this is important is that it begins to set the foundation for a whole series of other ways that we begin to look at what it means to have a self. Um, is there a self? Is the self somehow actually an existing entity? Is there a soul? Now personally, I don't believe that the soul exists, nor do I believe that a mind exists. I think that souls and minds are ways that we talk about how the brain itself operates. But if in fact there is no experience of a self, then that means the self has to do with how we put together memories of experiences. It's something that we actually create. This becomes incredibly important when we get to a couple of other philosophers. And the next philosopher we're gonna look at is Sigmund Freud. Freud takes some of the ideas of Hume, though I don't know that he did it understanding that it was Hume. One of them, for example, is the notion of the association of ideas. Remember how the ideas are associated? We associate ideas of things that look like each other. Hume calls that resemblance. We associate ideas that touch each other. For example, we think of the refrigerator and what's in the refrigerator. He calls that contiguity. And we associate ideas of cause and effect. If I hit myself in the head, remember, I associate the hit in the head with the thump and the pain that follows. But I have no impression of the relationship between the cause and the effect. Nevertheless, I associate ideas. And one of the big points that Hume says is that we habitually associate certain ideas that we have seen together that resemble each other, or we've seen causally, what we think to be causally related. Now, Freud is also going to talk about the association of ideas, and in fact it's part of Freudian psychoanalysis, is that you're going to let your ideas simply run their course, and what your ideas will be associated with are things that you have associated them with in the past. So for example, he's going to say the idea of something um, for course, the obvious is that something that looks like a knife would be associated with a phallus or a penis. These are the sorts of things that Freud thinks. But the point is that these associations are things that we would make. It's not that they, these two things are the same, but in fact what Freud is going to say when we get there in a minute is that the association of ideas is symbolic. And this is one of the places where Freud, I think, really gets it right. Human beings are symbolic creatures. That means we associate certain things with impressions or ideas or feelings that we have, and they aren't identical with each other, but they symbol, symbolize each other. All right, with that, let me turn this off. We'll get to Freud in just a second.